Welcome to this evening's edition of Nihi Teresita. You know, after reading about Ferdinand Magellan discovering Guam and landing in Pneumatic in 1521, I never really challenged it. I still don't. I leave that to the debaters on, on that issue. But it did strike me as being very smart of him to land in March instead of September. For had he landed in September, he would have faced this kind of weather. In recent years, we have heard some skepticism as to whether Magellan actually landed at Umatic or elsewhere, or for that matter, elsewhere in the Marianas. We defer that to others. Regardless of the outcome of that debate, the Spaniards considered Umatic a very, very important place and was important enough to guard it with four forts, two of which still stand today. Fort Soledad on the south, which is still in remarkably good shape, and Fort Santo Angel on the north, shown here, battered by the sea, as it has been for over a century. Two other forts are in ruins. Galleons sailing between Mexico and Midland often refurbished their food and water supplies in the Spanish port of Umatic. The town became prosperous, and there was much activity between Umatic and Agania. As in the case of Spanish settlements around the globe, during that time, the main road was named El Camino Real, the King's Highway, that road extended from Umatic to Agania and ran along the coast. The old road has long disappeared, but four bridges remain from the Spanish days on Guam that markedly changed our bloodlines, our culture, and our island. This bridge in Umatic does not even look like a Spanish bridge made of stone on the surface. Decades ago, this road was built over it, and motorists drive over this road by the hundreds daily without realizing they're actually driving over a Spanish bridge built in the last century. Water from Sado Castillo still run under this bridge. These captivating scenes of Seti Bay and Sela Bay are familiar to everyone on Guam and tempts the viewer to visit them. Be aware that these are very difficult places to reach either by land or sea. We chose to go by sea, but the sea acted like a horse that did not want a rider. The fabled coral rocks and shoals that are nightmarish to navigators were everywhere but we locked out and we landed safely, and this is the sight that greeted us, the Spanish bridge over Sela Bay, part of El Camino Real. Within a hundred yards from the bridge are the remains of a Spanish beehive woven, and this lotty site, which the fervent jungle keeps covering up after its last visitors leave. The last growth around it momentarily catapulted me back when such natural settings were not constantly threatened by thoughtlessness and neglect. Continuing our journey north, we visited the Spanish bridge over the Talifa in Agate, which has become a favorite tourist, and understandably so. The journey north to Agania ended on this bridge, which we call Tolai Acho, Stone Bridge, when I was a child, even though its real name is actually San Antonio Bridge. Structurally, the bridge remains an imposing and impressive site due to the care given it by our Territorial Parks Department. Happily, the bridge has a lovely Sirena who moved in there a few years ago. Sadly, like the beautiful city of Agania, it has stepped aside from being in the mainstream to serving as a depository of stagnant water, a bridge over a river that no longer flows. Kalanapini ti di disse una storia lo importante na i famagun utumo storia in Guam durante i tempi ni espanyol. Se giusto ma si è una settimana si ben blasio.